Hi everyone, I'm Zach Greenberg, co-founder of Musicians for Health and your host of Brain Food. Today we have with us Justin Jetty. He is a recent 2020 graduate of University of Cincinnati and CCM Music School. Justin, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like for 2020 graduate and being both on the academic side and then on the musical side of taking classes and ensembles and how that all how that all panned out? Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. Wow. So I went into spring of 2020, my senior year, spring final semester, and everyone was excited for sure excited. Um, it's So my program was uh, commercial music production, which was like first two years you focused on your instrument and your lessons and stuff like that. And then the next two years you focused on all your studio work and production in the studio and kind of prepping for the final project, your senior capstone of uh, like a three song EP. Mm. And so they always have, they have like great facilities at UC. Yeah, or, or we have an awesome studio down there, and so everyone went in. And Kim Pencil is the program director for that. He's a great jazz musician, uh, composer, and um, he was like our mentor for the senior capstone. So we all have had classes with Kim in the past, songwriting and composition classes, and all that good stuff. So it was like everyone was so excited and everyone was talking to Kim and we were all getting in line and we had the first couple classes but we went back to school that started January 15th somewhere there and everyone was trying to get the ball rolling doing their pre-production for the EP and then it was sort of I think everyone was just starting to lay tracks down and get everything in the ball rolling on actually getting the music made for the albums and the EPs and then the all the corona covid 19 stuff happened and it was yeah. like and that was the week before spring break so it was like and no one took it as that big of an issue and everyone was kind of joking at first like we knew how serious it was but didn't at the time yeah 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 for and sure everyone was like okay well, we're going on spring break, so everyone kind of went. And then during or the week after spring break, they were like, yeah, we're not coming back to classes. And I was like, well, what are we, how? And then they, you know, went through a lot of phases for like two weeks was burn up trying to just do the logistics of figuring out what to do. And they were like, well, we're still going to do senior recitals for everyone. And, you know, you'll still be able to access the studio. It's just going to be limited. And they were trying to work it out. And then it got to the point where it was like, you see, it was like, no one can come on campus. There's no reason, there's no excuse to be here. Um, my friend who was an RA, she was like homeless. <laughs> they were like, you know, she was living at the dorm doing her RA stuff. Wow. And they were like, you need to leave. And she was like, okay. And she lives in um, California. She's from like Simi Valley. And so she mid semester, while like still having to finish our projects and our EPs and stuff was, she was like, I guess I got to go home, but which made it difficult for everyone because I luckily had a studio that I was able to work out of um, in Covington, Kentucky. But a lot of people like her, she was stuck like at home with the gear that she had, which was yeah. not comparable to what she had access to to do her EP. Yeah, it's you know, received. It's that's a and, big studio. And we were supposed to do everything on our own, like from the pre-production to the recording to the minus some instrumentalist stuff. If you you know needed a horn player, you can play horn, whatever. But it was the mixing and mastering and everything was supposed to be on our own. But a lot of us had never really. Some people had never mastered. Some people were better at mixing. Some people were better at production. And so like. I had never really mastered anything at a radio quality level. And so I'm like talking to my professor, I'm like, I don't really, I can't do what I was gonna do. You know, I don't really have access to a piano player now that's 
able to play. So, I mean, I could get by playing on my album, I guess. And I kind of had to do that. But so, like, the quality of what I should have got out of it, I wasn't able to get just doing it kind of from, like, a home studio. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were like that. Like, my friend, she had to do everything on her MacBook in Logic. She, you know, didn't have Pro Tools at the time and only had, you know, MIDI instruments to, to do everything with and her guitar and a... I'm not sure how much you had actually, but not anything like what we had in the studio. Yeah. And so, because I mean, gear, like, gear is something you can't really replace. Like, it's one thing speaking from someone who generally does everything on their albums from writing, mm -hmm. you know, producing, recording, mixing, mastering. Right. Uh, on the technique side, it can be overwhelming, but especially mm -hmm. just coming out of school, you know, like being thrown into that fire isn't necessarily. Yeah a bad thing for like for you to all of a sudden you're like I don't know how to master it and then it's like well yep. we'll try. but that's not something you can really do with gear you know it's like you now have one mic and one you know you're in your laptop yeah. versus you had five million dollars worth of equipment that that's, yeah, no, that's very different to try you know, around. mixing and mastering like mastering speakers and you know and now I'm on my my Sennheiser headphones trying to do it yeah which it got done and it sounded decent but it definitely wasn't the quality that I was able to produce if I would have been in the studio at CCM with, you know, the, and the mentor, like the mentoring that we would have had went from being, you know, in the studio with someone who's been doing it for yeah. 40, 50 years, you know, it went from him sitting next to me showing me how to do things to us trying to do it via zoom meeting and you know i got i have the zoom meeting open we have i have them trying to work on pro tools at the same time you yeah. know so it was like it definitely was not as it was so much more of a different it was not hands-on learning really anymore it felt like yeah and the tech that technology thing is something that as an industry we've been struggling with and able to you know make some big improvements mm -hmm. but you know, it's very difficult um if possible at all to be able to like for us right now to just play you know and have and deal with latency and deal with yeah. you know all of these things um and luckily there is a lot higher education level now and also gear has gotten a little cheaper so like people are able to do more at home than if this was 20 years ago um if this would happen 20 years ago i don't know what you would have done <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so I guess it would have just been over <laughs> yeah and so now that you've graduated into this where we're in this industry that we've been talking about that's kind of um trying to figure out what it is because it's hard for it to exist um in this moment uh what has that meant for you and for your path and where where are you at right now gosh musically i always divert but i always come back to it yeah so it was like four years of school and I was like, man, what am I going to do now? I'm graduated. What's my next step? So I actually took a different path. And I, you know, as we were speaking a little bit before the meeting, I got a different job at a different company, not doing anything music related. But in the back of my mind, I'm always staring like, okay, I'm here for now. Let me, you know, get yeah. my money saved up. And, you know, I'm always, oh, I never stopped writing. You yeah. Know, I'm always writing new songs and doing new ideas really but like when it comes to like playing with a band i've always loved playing on stage whatever type of music it may be friday night bar or club or event wedding band whatever it's always fun to play but like you said so much has changed like there's not as many places open pulling in enough money to have a pay a live band a thousand dollars for the night or five hundred dollars for the night it's because yeah. they don't have the capacity to have that many people in there to make that much money now. And so it was like, it was so interesting watching everyone all of a sudden go from, you know, if I wanted to see someone, I would figure out where they were playing and I would go see them or my buddy would invite me to come, you know, to whatever little club they were playing at down in Newport or Cincinnati or whatever. And then it went to like, all of a sudden I started getting stuff popping up on my Facebook and I was like, Oh, 
I got a concert invite on Facebook live. <laughs> so it went from like everyone doing live gigs and I would go get a bite to eat and watch them play to me, you know, sitting on my couch, watching my friends play shows via Facebook live. Yeah. And have you, a lot of your, have a lot of your friends been doing that? Have you found a lot of like your classmates and stuff? Have they been accessing the community and the art? Oh yeah. Classmates. Um, there's a, a kid at CCM that I believe graduated the class of 2020. His name was Harrison Sheckler. He mm -hmm. did a, a huge, amazing thing. It was like, they ended up on CNN with that. Um, gosh, I will have to send you the info um, post meeting. I will have to look that up. But he did like this virtual thing where he brought students from all around the country together. And um, he worked with a studio out of Cincinnati. I believe they were uh, Zated, Zated Records out of Cincinnati. And they did all the, they, and those are all CCM. Uh, commercial music production students as well I think over there at that label and uh, he did like this amazing thing where he had students from like all different schools all come together and um, played he had violinists from all different schools play the string parts and he did like the best virtual thing of bringing like gosh he must have had more than 100 people on that was that the let it be was that a Beatles yeah, that's what it was yeah, I think it was the B with Harrison Sheckler. He was a piano player. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah, that's what exactly what I'm talking about. Yep, thank you. And it seems like, um, do you, to me, do you feel like um, the program that you came out of? It was so when it, I remember when it was first starting because it's pretty new, right? It was just with the, you were one of the first, we one of the first years or something. My year was the first graduating class. My first year was the first graduating class. So when I went in, it was only four years old yeah and um i remember it was very very progressive at the time to be looking at um creating a program that was so collective and mm -hmm. um and really a really approached what you need to survive as a musician versus like what you need to play as a musician because a lot of times schools overlook all of the other aspects that are really going to be what it comes down to surviving on your art is being able to you know get around to the industry so but it seems like with your program and then graduating into this new economy and industry that you were able to develop a lot of the skill sets that versus if you just graduated from a jazz school or a conservatory or something and now you're maybe you know a great guitar player but you, there's not much to do with it at the moment yeah a lot, most of the focus, I would say, my program was songwriting. Most of the focus was logic-based, understanding film scoring logic, you know, um, pretty much every, we, logic was definitely one of the biggest components of school. I spent probably like 100% of my time at school, I must have spent probably over 50% of it was most of the time involving logic, whether it be my film scoring class, whether it be MIDI music production and just creating different genres of music from Logic, whether it be using it to make demos for songs that I was showing in class. So that was definitely the route of that program of commercial music production. It was really, really Logic based and it still is. Mm -hmm. um, maybe more now than it was. Like the first class, I don't think they took, yeah, the first class, the first couple of classes didn't take music theory. Well, uh-huh. Yeah. And so like there was, and it was something most of them learned on their own and figured out because they had to, but like they weren't required to take music theory one and two yeah. for freshman year. And then like they had ironed that out. I think the, I think they were actually required by like the state, you know, the college people that give out bachelors in music they're like you have to we can't do this unless you have them take a theory class <laughs> and so by the time I got there they integrated theory into it which I'm more than happy that I had to take that um and musicianship which is oral skills at C CCM um but there was definitely a ton of things that changed while I was there um 
gosh, it was always like new classes being added. Um, like they ended up, like they did an engraving class my senior year that they made available, which was just, you know, we're going to finale and stuff or whatever you writing software choices. Yeah. Uh, they started focusing on that a lot, being able to make, we were really huge on being able to make, like, we always had to make lead sheets for everything. That was, I can make a lead sheet pretty fast now. <laughs> but um, that was always, like, huge. They, yeah, commercial music production was definitely software-based. And a lot of times, for a while, they didn't allow other programs into it, but they started allowing, like, jazz studies kids to come over and take the logic class like MIDI music production so yep. they started kind of reaching out and there was one girl that she was actually commercial music production and um doing jazz studies as well at the same time like double majoring oh very I, think cool. up, I think she ended up going the jazz studying route she actually blew up her name was emmeline she actually ended up doing really well um with her touring and um, a lot of her songs and album releases she did. But uh, so over my time there, they, the classes started getting bigger and bigger with more programs coming to do the mini music production and the film scoring type stuff and the logic, anything logic based. People started kind of doing the jazz studies and then taking, you know, mini music production as an elective. Yeah, you know, uh, it's probably like my one friend Phil. He always like everyone's like, "What do you play?" And that <laughs> question everyone gets when they go to school for music. What do you play? Um, <laughs> he always say like, he's always like, "I play the laptop." <laughs> you know, he he loves making music. He's an amazing guitar player, but just loves making music on his laptop. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely have some friends like that that are just amazing in the box. So, yeah. so what are you doing now? If you're not playing um, musically, where where are you at in life? Musically, trying to get enough money to just do music all the time. <laughs> Retire and play music and write music. You know, I'm always writing. Um, I still keep in contact with all of my like internships I've done in the past every school. But it's like everyone's kind of at a standstill at the moment, it seems like. Yeah, definitely. Like a lot of people are like, I'm, they're, you know, a lot of studios are like, we don't know where we're at right now or what's going on. Like, you know, we're a little behind. We haven't had people in for a while. And so, like, it seems like I'm being so busy at my new job, which I don't necessarily like doing all the time. But, you know, it's like, I think what I've noticed is I used to have people reach out like, Hey, can you come fill in? Hey, can you, and it was a little easier. You'd see someone, Hey, we're looking for, Hey man, can you come play a couple shows with us? Our guitar players out of town, whatever. And then, you know, you always get them in that way and then you end up playing with them for a year. But it's like, I haven't seen anyone reach out to anyone lately. It seems like, like there's no one been like, Hey, I'm looking for a guitar player for a gig on Saturday. It's like, Everything was so locked down and shut yeah. down for so long. It's like no one's doing as much, it seems like. Yeah, the industry is definitely on hold. But I yeah. think it's great that you've been able to diversify and figure out, you know, making some income outside of the industry yeah. and be able to, you know, put it into being able to build a sustainable career. Is Everything always leads me back to music in the long run, though, it seems like. No matter what I do, what direction I go or think I'm going to go, I always get led back into doing what I really love. Yeah. Playing music. And so I don't get too worried working like a nine to five at the moment. Cause I know eventually with music, it's just always been an opportunity to present itself at the most random time. The best musical opportunities have always presented themselves to me. Yeah. I really love people like that for me. Just like, Whenever I'm least expecting it, then I'm like, oh, wow, I'm playing music again all of a sudden. I'm, wait, I'm, I have a, I'm booked up every weekend playing for the next three months. 
Yeah. You know? When it rains, it pours in the industry. For yeah. sure. Well, Justin, thank you so much for being on our show on Brain Food and for being with us and giving us some insight into you know, the extremely crazy time for a big chunk of our, uh, our youth yeah, 2020 graduation class. And especially more involved at the moment. Yeah. Definitely. So thank you again. And um, I'm excited for this all to wrap up and we get to play again.